come, precious Holy Spirit, guide us into all truth. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome your guidance. We yield to your superior technology. We yield to your, your superior strength. For the flesh profits nothing. It is the spirit who gives life. In our own self and in our own abilities, we can do nothing. We can vent all we want. We can become aggressive about things. We can express anger, rage, and even do things in the flesh. But in reality, it is the spirit who is able to bring meaningful change, real change, true change. There is a change that the Holy Spirit orchestrates. And how we long for that change, Holy Spirit. How we long for that transformation that comes from and through you. We do not rely, the Bible says, woe to him who trusts in the arm of the flesh. We do not trust the arm of the flesh. We're not of those, Lord, who look to man, who look to humans uh, for salvation, who look to humans for redemption, who look to humans whose breath is in their nostrils to offer any lasting help whatsoever. For we also know that you know, most of the things we deal with are spiritual. There are spiritual dimensions to them. Humans can't even navigate the spiritual realm. So, Lord, we trust you. Lord, as your people, we turn to you. We turn to you. We turn to you at this critical moment in human history, not just our nation, but in human history. We continue to look to you, Lord. We continue to turn to you. But help us, Lord, to remember one thing also, that the earth is the Lord's, and he has not given it up to Satan. The earth is the Lord's. He has not turned it over to humans, humans who are self-destruct. The earth is the Lord's and all of its fullness. He founded it. The Bible says he has founded it upon many waters and has established it by a perpetual decree. So we thank you for the earth belongs to you. It doesn't belong to humans. Humans are self-destruct, producing weapons of mass destruction, always going after one another, causing wars here and there, just shedding blood. That's what humans do because, of course, of the fallen nature. So we know humans do not have within themselves the power, the ability to better their own lives, to upgrade their lives, even though they talk, they, they talk, they talk. But in reality, everything they do tends towards destruction, towards death. So Lord, those who are of God, little children who are of God, hears your voice, they hear your voice. We turn to you. We cry out for help. We cry out for divine intervention. We cry out, Holy Spirit, for an outpouring, outpouring upon the earth, outpouring upon your church, outpouring upon your servants, upon the ministers of God, for they are the ones who purport to represent you, Lord, that we all may have an encounter, that we all may have true divine encounters of the Spirit, encounters that would transform, encounters that would enrich, encounters that would enlighten, encounters that would inform, encounters, Lord, that will enlighten our understanding and give us, Lord, true understanding that will uh, unveil truth for there's so much lies in the world today, so much lies, so much deception. And Lord Jesus, you said that even if it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. And we see that happening all over the place. The very elect seem to be deceived even now. But Lord, those who cry to you, those who look to you, their faces are radiant. They grow from strength to strength. They go from strength to strength. They are transformed daily. Those who behold the glory of the Lord with unveiled faces are being transformed daily. From one level of glory to another higher, better level of glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord, taking on the form and the likeness of Christ. That's our goal. That's our desire. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Arise, oh God. Let your enemies be scattered. Let those who hate you flee before you. Like the wax, let them melt before your presence. Let them turn back and run from your presence. Flee from the sight of the God of Jacob, the God of Israel, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Guide us, Holy Spirit, in our prayers today. Let Jesus be glorified. 
And for that, we say amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Again, you're welcome. I just want to go ahead and say, you know, saints of God, we've got to wake up. We've got to wake up. Uh, we are in a critical moment, not just only of our nation, for those of us who are in the United States, but in, 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 in reality for the entire human race. I don't know where the human race is going. Everywhere you turn, there's a problem. Everywhere you turn, there's catastrophe. Everywhere you turn, there's there's an issue. There's, it's almost like things are coming to a head. And and for those of us who have any inclination towards things of the spirit, we've we know where this is coming from. We know what is happening, except you just pretend to play dumb. But we know where it's coming from. Uh, we have taught it in our local house of worship. We've pointed back to Mystery Babylon. The Bible says she's the mother of all the abominations of the earth. You know, causes the, the, the death and destruction. She's responsible. She is responsible for it, spilling blood all over the place, carrying out an evil agenda, and unfortunately has kings of the earth under her influence. By the way, it's, even though it uses a, a female, you know, fem feminine gender, if you will, it is still the same, same old Satan, the same old red dragon, the same old devil doing business as Mystery Babylon. But today we want to pray prophetic prayers over the mountains of America. We've talked a little bit about this subject, but today I just want to do prayers more so. Now, somebody may ask if you've not heard us, if you've not heard the subject from us before, why pray for America? There are denominations and, and sects and, and, and you know local houses of worship who do not believe in praying for the nations, who do not believe in praying for their nations. That is... Um, <laughs> that is that is not right. I'm just going to be polite. That is not right. That is not the right thing to do. If you believe in any prayers at all, if you except you don't believe in prayers at all, if you believe in any prayers at all, the question is why do you pray? If you pray and your prayer is for divine intervention, then I think our nations need divine intervention. So pray for your nations. Pray for your nations. And if you can, pray for the nations of the earth. The Lord Jesus specifically told us, my house shall be called a house of prayer for the nations. All right. But today, if you look at Second Chronicles 7.14, we pray for the nations and the earth, as a matter of fact, including America, more specifically today, because the word of God invites us to do so. Second Chronicles 7.14, there are so many scriptures, I don't have a time to go into all that today. But Second Chronicles 7.14 stands out, very outstanding. It says, if my people who are called by my name. So this is the Lord God speaking to his servant, right? Speaking to, this was Solomon, dedicated, you know, having built a mighty temple unto the Lord and all of that was dedicating it. And, and, you know, made uh, sacrifices, offerings unto the Lord, bullocks and rams and all of that, you know, the way only kings can do. And the Lord God began to respond to Solomon. And here's what the Lord told him. If my people, <clears throat> if you go to verse 13, he said, you know, if I cause uh, uh, famine in the land, locusts, you know, or a warring nation comes against your land, specifically Israel. He said, if you will call to me facing this temple that you've built to me, if my people who are called by my name, but we know he's not just the God of Israel, he's the God of humanity. Genesis 1, 20 says, let us make humans. Let us make humans in our image, according to our likeness. Humanity was made by God. God made humans. Humanity is God's idea. Humanity is God's, you know, product. Let us make humans in our image, according to our likeness. See that? Israel is just a microcosm of what God is doing on the earth and, <clears throat> and more so in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, we know that, you know, the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ is for all. 
it's as many. God so, John 3, 16, God so loved the world. See that, not just Israel. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whosoever. So you see, not just Israel or the Jewish, whosoever. That puts you in. That puts me in. Whosoever believes will not perish, but have eternal life. And if God saves people, he also saves their households. If God saves their households, it also saves the things that, you know, belong to them. If God saves the things that belong to them, then he can also save their nations, the nations they to which they belong. But observe that this is a conditional statement. If my people, if my people, and that's the dilemma we find ourselves in today. God's people hardly pray. And even when we pray, we pray uh, parochial prayers, short-sighted prayers, lopsided prayers, self-motivated prayers, one-sided prayers. We don't pray spirit-inspired prayers. The prayers that, that you know, the, the Lord is calling from us, the Holy Spirit is requiring of us, is prayers inspired by the Spirit, prayers based on the Word of God. People are praying all over the earth. There are people who thumb their chest as prayer warriors. But sometimes I ask the question, what are they praying? What are they praying? In fact, if you look at this text again, the question will also be asked, who is praying? It says, my people. My people. Now, of course, a lot of people will identify themselves as God's people, so that's okay. But, you know, make sure you're truly of God. Not just, you know, if that's the first step you want to take care of. Are you truly a person of God? Can you really say I'm a child of God? Can you really say, you know, God is my father. God is my God. I serve God. I worship God. Can we, can we say that? If my people, my people, and there's a reason for that, because when you make yourself, you know, a, a child of God, when you say I'm a child of God, then it means that God is your father. If God is your father, then it means that you, to a degree, understand his agenda. Or at least you, you, you are willing to learn his agenda, his will, and to be obedient to that will. If that's not the goal, what's the point in praying? What's the point, saints of God? What's the point, people? If, you're, if the goal is not to find out what God wants, because you know he's God, you are not. So he knows better. His will is better. His plan is best. You know that. So if, you're, if our prayers is not for the purposes of finding out what the will of God is, so as to establish that will, then there's no point praying because it, it, the alternative is trying to use God. The alternative is attempting to turn God into an errand boy who just does your wish. He's not a genie in a box that you just rob and command and tell what to do. This has to be corrected in, in God's people. This, it, it is the, it, this is prayer 101, the first step. And Jesus laid it bare. He said, you know, if you, if you do not deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Think about those words, people of God. They, do you think Jesus has changed his mind about that? And I always tell folks, the way Jesus spoke in the Bible, that's how he really talks. You see, you follow his words. That's it. When you, if you stand before him, that's how, you're gonna, that's how he's going to speak. That's exactly how he talks. And he hasn't changed his mind, hasn't changed his personality. So the call to discipleship is a call to self-denial. The call to discipleship or the call to the service of God, the call to the service of Christ is a call to deny self. And that is the first step. And unfortunately, most believers haven't crossed that step. We still come with our own wishes. We come with our own desires and we want to impose our desires on God. And then we go for long, prolonged prayers, prolonged fastings, as if we can bend the mind of God, bend the will of God. Are we willing to humble? That's the next thing. Will humble themselves. Think about it. Are we willing to humble ourselves? And I look around, I don't see humble people. I don't see humble people. I don't see people who are truly humble. You know, the, 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 the sign of humility is 
is that you know we we're not in, imposing we're not we're not we're not just it, it's not a, a shouting contest the sign of humility is, is one of you know a, a posture of reverence a posture that that acknowledges that you know without him we can do nothing uh, a posture that acknowledges that you know except the lord watch over the city the watchers they watch in vain see that you know the, the posture of humility is one that that desires to to know the will of god concerning every matter if you've already jumped on a particular ship if you've already taken a side if you've already blasted it on facebook this is where i belong this is who i've chosen my question is did you ask god did you seek god about that oh lord Humble themselves. Lord, we come humble before you today. Oh, Holy Spirit. Our nations, Lord, are reeling back and forth like drunk, like men who are drunk, like drunkards. Our leaders purport to know, purport to, you know, be, 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 be <laughs> capable of leading. But Lord, they've led us into, into, terrible places they've led us into lack they've led us into poverty they've led us into wars they led us into bloodshed they've come up with policies that make you wonder whose bright idea is this and those are the ones who lead us the ones who claim to be you know the 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 the, the best of the class the the brightest bulbs in the in, 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 you know <laughs> that there is the brighter bulb, bulbs there are. Some of them attended what they will call the best schools, attained great qualifications, well-known, great titles. Some of them have amassed great wealth. Some of them are great orators. When they speak in public, they sway the people. The people cheer and shout and all that. And some of them have become idols to the people. Oh, God. But yet, look at where we are. Look at where they've led us. Look at where they've led us. Common sense is no longer common. So, Lord, where should your people be? Should your people continue to endorse foolishness? No, not, not so. It's time to turn to the Lord, God's people. It's time to turn to the Lord, ministers of God. It's time to turn to the Lord, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. It's time to turn to the Lord, O oh, church of God, church of Jesus Christ. And here is the critical thing. Our prayers, the Bible says the effectual fervent prayers of righteous people avails much. Amplified says it produces much power, dynamic in its workings. It generates much power dynamic in its work is the effectual fervent prayers of righteous people can produce power that is dynamic in its work is saints of god your vote is not as critical as your prayer who you cite in an election is not as critical as your prayers your prayers are able to produce power that is dynamic in its workings dynamic in its operation Oh, Lord. He said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. It takes humility to pray these kind of prayers. Because when you've already taken your side, I mean, what's the point? There's no humility there. You've already taken a side, so you're coming against the other side. And, and using words that, you know, unbecoming of those who profess to be of God. Going after one another. Posting all kinds of things on Facebook. Have you prayed? Have you humbled yourself before God? And you purport to be one who bears the name of the Lord, who represents Christ. I would say to you, the Lord God, the word of God, the Holy Spirit invites us to pray at this critical moment. He said they will humble themselves and pray. Look at that. Seek my face. They say, forget the individual set before us. Forget the character set before us. Seek my face. Have we sought his face? Have we sought his face, people? Before we come out boldly to make any take any oath of allegiance, which uh, uh, Psalm 29, you know, calls a, a, a 
is this I'm turning now, particularly this we read on, on Sunday, calls an oath of, 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 of uh, 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 deception, of falsehood. Some eight actually it is. Oath of falsehood and deception. Before you take an oath, before you make a play, before you take a side, have you sought the face of God? That's what he says. And don't throw stones at me. That's the word of God, except you have a problem with the word of God. If you have a problem with the word of God, then deal with that. You deal with that. But if you're not following the word of God, let it be known that you're not following the word of God. Stop acting like you're following the word of God. That's the word of God. Seek my face, he says. Seek my face. Did you seek his face? Lord, what are you doing at this point in time? Lord, what should be our posture? What should we do? Oh, Father, we seek your face, Lord. That's why humility is necessary. That's why humility is the first, the first requirement. We humble themselves. We come before you humble, oh, Father. We come before you humble, oh, Father. And we, we're not even asking you to humble me. Some people pray, say, God, humble me. No, you can't ask that. That's that terrible. If God humbles you, my Lord and my God, you don't know how he's going to do it. But we humble ourselves. At least we of this house, we of this house, we humble ourselves, oh, Father. We acknowledge, Lord, our weaknesses. We acknowledge our frailty. We acknowledge our ignorance as a matter of fact. We acknowledge, Lord, our tendency towards emotional hype. We acknowledge our tendency towards idolatry. So we, we acknowledge all that before you, but we come before you with humility, in humility, seeking your face. Seeking your face, oh God, even as we pray. And Lord, we turn from our wicked ways. Search us, O oh God, if there be any wicked way in us. Search us, O oh Father, if there be any wicked thing in us. What do you consider wicked ways, O oh Father? Because in our own estimation, we will give ourselves the pass mark. We will give ourselves the pass mark, definitely. We will call ourselves, you know, excellent, perfect, nothing wrong with us. But the evaluation of the Lord is different. The evaluation system of the Lord and of the spirit and of the word is different. So, Lord, we come before you bare, asking that you will search our hearts. He said you're the one who searches the hearts of men. You search through the reins of the hearts of men. Search our hearts, O oh Father. If there be any wicked way, any wicked thing, wicked thoughts in us, Lord, remove, take it away. Purge us, cleanse us, purify us. By your spirit, by your word, by the water of the word, wash us clean, O God. Spirit, soul, and body, wash us, O Father. Spirit, soul, and body, wash us clean, O God, that we might be able to stand before you and that our petition will come before you without any hindrances or accusation from the accuser of the brethren. We thank you, Father. It says if we do that, he will hear from heaven. Hear, hear us, O God. Let our prayers ascend to you as sweet-smelling incense. Let our cries come to you, Lord, as, as incense, Father, sweet-smelling incense that is well-pleasing to you, O Father. Hear from heaven, Lord, forgive our sins, Lord, and heal our land. It's your desire, it's your will to heal our land, and we pray, Father, that you will heal our land. And I enjoin you, if you're in another part of the world, pray for your nation, please. Follow the same pattern, just pray for your nation. We pray for nations, but our nation needs prayer right now. And why do, why do I pray for America? Because that's the land of my citizenship, my residence, you know, and my occupancy, okay, and my ministry also. It is the, it is the place of my ministry. So that's the ministry the Lord has given us. We pray for the nations and, you know, you know that. But I'm asking you pray for your own nation. Just follow the same patterns. Pray for your, stand in the gap for your nations. Oh, hallelujah. The critical role and duty of prophetic people is intercession. I have heard a lot of prophets, and I'm not here to bash them either. A lot of prophecies going on. And when you compare notes, you see they are a lot of times they clash. One to this side, the other to this side, that sometimes it leaves you in confusion. You don't even know which one to follow anymore. But that's also, that's why we ought to pray. Because if all you're following is prophetic words. Uh, by the way, let me say this about prophetic words. 
I understand people are always looking for accuracy, accuracy of prophetic words. But please understand that accuracy is not the first goal in prophetic words. Accuracy definitely is a part of it, but it's not the first. The first is source, the sourcing of it. You have to place it. Because if your goal, if all your goal is accuracy, I promise you Satan can be accurate. I promise you familiar spirits can be accurate. I promise you water spirits, marine kingdom can give accurate prophetic words. Familiar spirits gather information. So by virtue of that fact, they are able to give accurate prophecies. They can predict, they can, because they can they do what we call permutations. All right. They understand humans. Uh, if you go back to the days of Job, the Bible, you know, the Lord God asked Satan, where are you coming from? He said he's going back and forth observing humans. That was when he was learning about humans. But I tell you, after 6,000 years, thereabout, he's learned humans very well. His, his, his database is full of, of the knowledge of humans. He's learned humans, which is why he came up with the, with the understanding that Humans will give up for, for anything for their, to, to preserve their own lives. That's what he said about Job. So that's something he learned about humans. And he's learned much more. That humans will, are self-preserving beings. They preserve self. They, anything that gratifies self will attract humans. They're ready to give up anything. Give up relationship, give up money, give up allegiances, give up anything just to preserve their own self. So humans are selfish is what Satan was saying. Satan has learned humans. Okay, so based on his knowledge of humans, he can make accurate predictions. So if accuracy is your goal, mm, you're going to be deceived still. What you're looking for is the source, the source, the source, the source. Where is it coming from? Where is it truly coming from? Where is it truly? Is it coming from the, 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 <laughs> is it coming from the concussion of human minds? The, 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 you know, the pigments of people's imaginations? Or is it coming from and there are different realms. I don't have the time to go into all it, but there are different realms. Sometimes it's coming from nationalism. Think about that too. In fact, nationalism, I think, is a great culprit when it comes to these things. When you are nationalistic, it will affect and taint your prophetic you know, insight. Your prophetic will literally be bent to suit you know, that posture of nationalism. That is why we talk about kingdom. That is why we must be divorced from in earthly allegiances and earthly alliances and be totally aligned to the kingdom. We are kingdom people. That's who we are. Our allegiance is forced to Christ. Our allegiance is forced to the Lord God Almighty, maker of the heavens and the earth. It so happens that you were born in a certain part of the world. You could have been born elsewhere. There are people who were born in space, actually. So what nation would you say they are, they are part of? How they belong to if it's about birth. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the critical role and duty of prophetic people is intercession. It's not necessarily your declarations. Thank God for your declarations. But more critical are your prayers. More, by the way, you could see things and hear things in the spirit, but your interpretation could be wrong. That's why you also require or need the Holy Spirit to interpret what you see and what you hear. As prophets, you have open eyes. As prophets, you have open ears, depending on how your prophetic you know, uh, uh, gift operates. It can even be feeling. It can be premonition. It can be a knowing. It can be sight. It can be visions. It can be dreams. However God's, you know, however your prophetic ministry operates, but interpretation of the spirit is critical. Interpretation of the spirit is critical. It's okay to say, Lord, you know, like the Lord God asked Jeremiah, son of man, what do you see? He said, he said thou knowest. Son of man, can these bones, can these bones live? So only you know. You know, son of man, what do you see? I see a flying scroll. What does it mean? I don't know. Right? Spoke to Micah. He said, thus says the Lord to Zerubbabel, uh, you know, uh, uh, an olive bowl, uh, I mean a bowl, an olive branch, you know, oil, lamb, that's the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. How do you explain that? So what are you talking about? Except the spirit gives understanding and interprets what is shown, what is seen, what is heard, what is felt, the insights received. Except that you just could be wrong. So you heard from God, yes, but your interpretation is still wrong. That's why we got to pray. 
prophecies have gone forth, but I'm telling you, saints of God, we've got to pray. We've got to pray. We stand a better chance with prophetic intercession, with spirit-inspired intercession than just following prophecies, than just following prophecies. Because the spirit realm is a, it's like a it's moving parts. So if you, if, you, if you had seen me, say, two hours ago, I was not sitting at this particular position. So if you saw me two hours ago, and that was the vision that you had, you captured a moment in time, and then you go ahead, oh, I saw Francis at so-and-so place, so-and-so place, at so-and-so time. Well, when you came down from the realm of the spirit, the spirit of the realm of the spirit was still moving. That's what people need to understand. The realm of the spirit is still moving. It's moving parts. So except you are in tune constantly, you never know. You, you, you captured a moment in time, but it's shifted and you just didn't know it. You're holding on to what you saw the other time, but it's shifted. Except the Lord who is the Lord of time speaks. You see, there's the difference between the thought says the Lord versus sight, vision, and all of that. When the Lord says, this is what the Lord says, okay, then you know it's established because it is the word of the Lord and we know heaven and earth may pass away, but the word of God abides forever. So when the word, when the Lord speaks, then we know the, the Lord has spoken. But if it's just your prophetic vision, seeing sight, hearing things, feeling things, and all of that, is a it's it's is a is a moving, it's moving parts. Everyone who has any prophetic inclination understands the critical nature of prayers. You call yourself a prophet, you should be praying. You call yourself a prophetic person, you should be praying. You're a part of the company of prophets, you should be praying. You believe in prophecy, you should be praying. You've received prophecy before, you should be praying. You know there's a thing called prophecy you should be praying now because all hands should be on deck all hands should be on deck lord help us prophetic people should stay true to the heart of the father so again i say divorce yourself from any earthly leanings left or right or whatever it doesn't matter divorce yourself it is only when you've divorced yourself from any of the leanings that you can truly represent god because god doesn't take sides he comes to be lord he is lord he doesn't take sides he is Lord. He doesn't take sides. Got to repeat that. The Lord God is Lord. He doesn't take sides. You could argue that a particular side is better on some things over the other and so on and so forth. But you, child of God, servant of God, cannot be a servant of man. Do not take sides before you come to the Lord. Come to the Lord as one who is leaning towards the Lord. Do not lean on your own understanding. Proverbs 3.15 tells us, 3.15 or 3.5 tells us. Prophetic people should give warnings that you receive and spell out the disaster that comes with rebellion, but they should also intercede for the people to turn to God. That should be the ultimate goal. What is the point if one side wins the election over the other side, but yet the nation is going down to hell? What's the point? What's the point in one side winning the election over the other, but the world is on fire, the world is in flames? What's the point? What's the point in one side winning the election over the others, but death continues to ravage our society, ravage our cities? What's the point? It's not about who wins the election. It's about the will of God. That's what Jesus said. Matthew 6, 10, pray in this manner. Our Father who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, verse 10. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That should be our prayers. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your wisdom, your counsel, O Lord, be established upon our nation. Even this United States, this America, even, Lord, within this period that we find ourselves in, the tussle and the, the contention for power and for control over the nation is causing a lot of turmoil, both in the realm of the spirit and natural. But Lord, we declare that your mighty hand is outstretched. Your mighty hand is outstretched, O God, that your rule will indeed reign over this nation, that the Lord God will indeed save America, save this nation, that the desire of the wicked upon this nation will not come to fruition, that the desire of ungodly people over this nation will not come to fruition. That the desire of those who hate God and hate the nation will not come to fruition. But that, Lord, you continue to advance your kingdom in this nation. Your light continues to shine. Your peace continues to reign. Prosperity continues to be the portion of your people. So that, Lord, will continue to live in godliness and in peace. 
according to your word in the name of Jesus. The contention for power over the land is a critical time. It's a time when there's a toss in the realm of the spirit. You know, when Daniel painted that picture, he talked about the four winds of heaven blowing upon the great sea. So turmoil, that's what it means. Great four winds. So the four winds of the earth blowing or the four winds of heaven blowing upon the great sea, the great sea being the multitudes of people, the nations of the earth. So as the four winds, the governing forces of the earth are contending, there is a tussle, there's a contention for control, for lordship, for rulership over the earth, over critical and strategic nations. It's a critical time to pray because you must understand whoever rises to the place of you know, dominion and to the place of power, to the place of rulership, will determine the direction the country goes, at least for the next four years, if not more. Because we know some policy have effects that linger for decades. You know that. You know that. What will this next administration bring? Have you thought about that? Will the next administration lead us into third world war? Have you thought about that? I know you're clinging to your you know, single issue. But if you get your single issue and the world is in flames, what's the point? What sense does that make? You want the will of God to be done. That's what Jesus said, pray. Lord, we pray your kingdom come. Your will be established in America. Your will be established over the nations of the earth, even as heaven has determined. We pray that, oh God, by the power of your spirit and by the orchestration of heaven, the Lord, your angels will go forth, will hearken to the voice of the Lord and do his bidding. And grant, Lord, that your will is done in America, in the nations of the earth for such a time as this. In the name of Jesus. Why pray over the mountains? The title says prophetic prayers over the mountains of America. So somebody will say, why mountains? Why not just pray for America? Well, I don't have all the time, but mountains are strategic to the foundations of the earth. Mountains are strategic to the foundations of the earth. Micah chapter 6 verse 2 says, hear all you mountains. So it's interesting the prophet is speaking to the mountains. And when he says, hear all mountains, it means that mountains have ears to hear spiritually. So everything you see in the natural began first in the spirit, according to God's creation. He is spirit. So everything starts from spirit before it materializes into the natural realm. So if you have natural mountains, you also have spiritual mountains. Right. So but this prophet is speaking to the mountains. Why is he speaking to the mountains? Why not just speak to Israel? Why not just speak straight to the people? Why not just speak to the kings? Why not just speak to the rulers of the nations of the nation? Why not just speak to the priests? Why not just speak directly to whatever the issue was? No, he, he began to address the mountains. Why? He understood there's something about the mountains. The mountains are considered the foundations of the earth. And where you deal with stuff is the root. The root You deal with stuff from the foundation. So it begins to address the mountains. Hear, O you mountains, the Lord's complaint. But look, he calls them you strong foundations of the earth. That's a poetic, uh, you know, rendition. So he's speaking about the mountains. In one verse, he calls them mountains. The next verse, he calls them foundations of the earth. So the mountains are the foundations of the earth. Even geologically, that's correct. Because mountains come from the earth's core. Mountains come from the earth's core. They are, you know, divine technology. You know, there are certain foundations that are elevated, not just only on the ground, like some bridges. You, you see some bridges where you have one mighty pillar extended, and then you have, you know, strings extended, and you're wondering how it's a technology. And so God was the first one to, to, to deploy that. So the mountains are actually foundations of the earth. And it says, for the Lord has a complaint against his people. So think about it. When the Lord has a complaint against his people, he speaks to the mountains. <laughs> That's interesting. He has a complaint against his people, but he's speaking to the mountains. So it must be that in the realm of the spirit, if you address the mountains, you address the people. If you address the mountains, you address the foundation, you address the root causes. And when you address the foundations, you address the people. So it's a spiritual thing. He it says it's contending with Israel, but he's dealing with the mountains at the same time. But also the satanic realm, why do we pray for over the mountains? The satanic realm understands the influence spiritual mountains have over the earth. It is us humans who don't understand these divine principles and concepts 
that God has put on the earth. And there are many. There are the principles of mountains. There are principles of the wind. There are principles of, you know, the forces of the earth, principles of light, and so on and so forth. These things were created by God, and he knows them better. So just because we don't know what they are or how they operate don't mean that they, there's nothing to them. Ezekiel 36, verse 1 and 2, the Lord God comes to Ezekiel, the prophet, and you, son of man, prophesy to the mountains of Israel. Why mountains? Why not just say prophesy to Israel? No, he specifically says prophesy to the mountains. There's something about that. But not only did he say prophesy to the mountains, he actually literally tells him what to say. When you go further down, you see that. But here it says, say, oh, mountains of Israel. Do you have to say that? Why don't you say, oh, Israel? No, say, say, oh, mountains of Israel. This is the Lord God saying this. Don't you think he knows what he's talking about? Say to the mountains of Israel, hear the word again, speaking to mountains as if they have ears. It must be then that the mountains have ears to hear. The Lord is showing us a divine principle. The Lord is showing us a divine technology here. Mountains, spiritual mountains, mountains of nations have ears to hear. Prophesy to mountains, he tells his servant Ezekiel. He said, Thor says the Lord God, because the enemy has said of you, aha, the ancient heights have become our possession. Literally speaking, these were the enemies of Israel. They were celebrating that the ancient heights or Israel have become their possession. But of course, when God, who is spirit, is declaring the same, he is speaking from a spiritual perspective. So we can say that the enemy nations, when God says, of course, God doesn't consider humans enemies. So when God says the enemy, who is God's enemy? The only, there's only one enemy that God has that he has boldly declared to be his enemy, and that's Satan, not humans, not humans. So God was speaking to the spiritual reality, even though it was manifesting literally in a certain way. But God was dealing with the spiritual reality. The enemy has said of you, you who? The mountains. Aha, that's a celebration. The ancient heights, a poetic term or phrase for mountains, have become our position. So Satan, the enemy of God, celebrates they are taking over the mountain. So when they take over the mountains of a nation, they celebrate. When, when Satan, through his human agents, ascends to government, don't you know he celebrates? See that? That's why these things are critical. So if Satan has his agents positioned, running for office, but we, as God's people, are ignorant and blind, and we can't see that these are agents of Satan, and we endorse them, we empower them, and then they rise to positions of power, guess what? A celebration in the camp of the enemy. we got our people up there. We've got our people in. That's why you've got to pray. That's why you've got to seek the face of God. That's why we've got to seek the face of God. The ancient heights have become our possession. The satanic realm rules the nations from the mountains. So observe, they took the mountains of Israel, but we also know from Revelation 17, 9, they don't give it up. They stay on it. Look at what, and by the way, this is coming from an angel. you got to read verse 1 to know the rank of this angel. Is, a, is an angel of high rank in the agenda of God. But he declares to John in Revelation 17, verse 9, here is the mind which has wisdom. Now, even if you stay with that alone, think about it. If this angel of great rank says to you, here is the mind who has wisdom, don't you think the angel knows what he's talking about? If he says, I'm about to show you wisdom, and this is an angel speaking, do you think you know better than the angel? Do you think you know better than this angel of great rank? So if this angel says this is wisdom, then saints of God, here is wisdom. There is wisdom here. And I pray we learn that wisdom. That's the problem. We choose, we, we devise our own means. Uh, Isaiah said concerning Israel, you have forsaken the fountain of living waters and you've made for yourselves broken cisterns that can hold no water. We forsake wisdom of God. We covet our own wisdom for ourselves and we pride ourselves in our human wisdom, which is foolishness in the realm of the spirit. But the angel says here is wisdom. What is the wisdom the angel is talking about? He tells John, here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains 
on which the woman sits. So wait, wait, wait. So the angel is saying, this wisdom I'm giving to you has something to do with mountains. At least you know that much. <laughs> the angel is saying, the wisdom I'm pointing you to, John, has something to do with mountains. But he quickly tells John, the mountains actually have been taken over. I just showed you Ezekiel 36. They celebrated the possession of the mountains. Probably they started with Israel, but they, they're also going for the mountains of the other nations. And we are praying for the mountains of America. But he said the seven heads are seven mountains. Why, why did the angel have to use mountains? should have said something else if it's something else. If the angel said mountains, then yeah, it's, it's about mountains. It's about mountains. Scripture is rift with talks about mountains. It is also don't pay attention. So this woman sits on seven mountains. What are those seven mountains? Are we bothered to find out? And I know some people have preached this in the past, but you know, here is scripture. Forget what people have said. Follow scriptures. So the angel continues to talk to John in the same Revelation 17. When he got to verse 18, he says, and the woman whom you saw is that great city, watch this, which reigns over the kings of the earth. So she sits over the seven mountains, but she also reigns over the kings of the earth. So if you combine those two, she sits over the seven mountains, and from there, she reigns over the kings of the earth. So whoever has influence over these seven mountains rules in the earth. And we're not talking about human leaders or human rulers. We're talking about a mystery woman called a woman here, but is, is a spirit being, is a spirit force called mystery Babylon when you read verse 5. So we're not talking about just humans. So if, they, if you have humans in the natural, what this angel wants you to understand is that beyond the humans, beyond the you know human characters who are vying for office, you've got to look be, you know, beyond them to see what spirit is behind. Who is behind each one? That's what this angel is saying. And he says that's wisdom for you to do that. So at the time of showing John this vision, he was telling John she sits over the seven mountains. In other words, she has a human agent over the seven mountains. Could it be that we're getting ready to, oh Lord, I can't even go there. Have we prayed? This is my point. Have we sought the face of the Lord? The one you're getting ready to endorse, have you prayed? Lord, who is behind this one? Will my endorsement of this one, will my vote for this one mean an endorsement of Mystery Babylon? Will it mean an endorsement of the woman who is attempting, who wants to govern and rule the kings of the earth from this exalted position, this lofty height, this ancient height called mountains, spiritual mountains, by the way. That should be our question. The angel says that's wisdom. It is wisdom to think about these things. This is just about my position. There are over 6 billion people in the world. <laughs> and I know it's hard, but my position is really not as important. I've got to think beyond myself. I've got to think beyond myself. I've got to think, and you've got to think beyond yourself. Again, I said to you, if you get your one, your single issue, but the world is in flames. What of what use is that? So how do we pray over mount, over mountains? Because pray, we say we're praying over the mountains. How do you pray over the mountains? Does scripture show us how to pray over the mountains? Absolutely. Praying over the mountains require, first and foremost, an understanding of biblical truths concerning the mountains. So some people taught the seven mountains in the past, and they talked about taking dominion over the seven mountains and stuff like that not here to bash nobody, but scriptures don't show that. Scriptures do not show that we take, humans take over mountains. These are spiritual mountains and humans could do not take over spiritual mountains to begin with. But there are things that the, the scriptures enjoin humans to do, prophetic people to do, God's people to do. So we have to have understanding of what scripture actually tells us to do with the mountains and stay there and go no further than that. Go no further than that. Don't concoct your own. Don't let the flesh now hijack the program and begin to lead the way. No, stay with what scripture. Scriptures are very clear on what it tells us to do with mountains. So praying over the mountains should be done 
in accordance with prophetic scriptures. Look for the prophetic scriptures. Search mountains. Do your own research. I got some. First and foremost, we know that the mountains are subject to Yahweh. Hallelujah. So, and child of God, that is a position of rest. That is a position of victory. That is a position of, you know, confidence. Don't start off your prayers like you're the victim. Don't start off your prayers like, oh my God, if we don't do it, like, you know, your politicians talk, oh, if you don't vote me, democracy is gone. We're, we're, we're protecting the, we're the ones, democracy was here before you were born, but you're the one protecting democracy. Okay, wonderful. Well, if you don't vote me, America is gone. The nation is gone. Okay, but the nation was here before you were born. Please, child of God, don't fall for all of those talks. Be the child of God that you are. Turn to the Lord, maker of the heavens and the earth. I started Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord. He has not given it to man. He has not given it to Satan. The Lord will not sit silent to watch humans destroy the earth. Before the earth will be destroyed, by it, it will be the Lord who brings the end of the world to pass, not humans. I, I say that again. I know you've stockpiled your nuclear weapons, but it will not be humans. Scripture shows us. And I know people are talking about nuclear war is going to happen. And by the way, I believe nuclear war is going to happen because history has shown that every weapon humans design, they've had occasion to use it. They've had an occasion to use it. And there are certain scriptures that point to what seems to be a nuclear war. There are certain scriptures that point to that. But I say to you, nuclear war will not bring the end of the world. The world, <laughs> what did he say? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. He has founded it upon many waters that it cannot be moved. It cannot be shaken. That's scripture. I'm saying scripture now. So you may have devised your nuclear weapons, but the scripture says it cannot be shaken. So your nuclear weapons, whatever happens, you might end up destroying human life. You might end up destroying, you know, natural life. But the earth will still be here. It will not be. Scriptures don't show us that it is humans who destroy the earth. What did the Bible say? It said, behold. You know, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the old heaven and the old earth have been rolled away like a scroll. That's scripture. Who rolled them? God, Yahweh. It won't be your nuclear weapons, America. It won't be your nuclear weapons, Russia. It won't be your nuclear weapons, China or any other nuclear nation. Turn to the Lord now that you can. You, can, you might end up destroying yourselves, but the earth is the Lord. So child of God, stop. Stop praying from a place of victimhood. Stop praying, praying from a place of fear. Oh, oh my God, oh my God, the world is going to be over. And that's why people make hasty decisions. The Bible says, he that believeth will not make haste. When you believe in the Lord and believe in the word of the Lord, you don't make haste. You turn back to the Lord. Lord, I've heard what they said, but what are you saying? Amos 4.13, for behold, he who forms mountains, hallelujah, Yahweh is his name and creates the wind. So think about it. Mystery Bible of Satan sits over the mountains. But who created the Who formed the mountains? Yahweh formed the mountains. Hallelujah. And creates the wind. Glory to Jesus. Who declares to man what his thought is and makes the morning darkness. Who treads the high places of the earth. Hallelujah. You are the Lord God who treads the high places of the earth. When you tread the high places of the earth, then the mountains are nothing before you. We declare the Lord of hosts is his name. Arise, O Lord God, maker of the mountains. And beat the mountains into shape. And forbids that the wicked one will use the mountains to rule over the people of the earth. More so the people of God. Scriptures also show us the mountains are subject to Yahweh because not only does he deform them, he can destroy them too. Psalm 97 verse 5. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of Yahweh, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. Yes, Lord. So the mountains can be taken over by mystery Babylon, can be taken over by Satan and all of that. But guess what? At the blast of his nostrils, the mountains will melt like wax. Hmm. The mountains are no match for the presence of the God of Jacob. The mountains are no match for the presence of Yahweh. And so we declare, oh, Lord God Almighty, maker of the mountains, that at the blast of your nostrils, the breath of your nostrils, the mountains will melt like wax. So you see, child of God, Psalm 46, though the earth is carried into the sea, 
and all of that. It says there's a river whose, whose, whose streams make glad the city of God. Be still and know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the position of children of God. That's the position of kingdom people. We are still in your presence. But you see, you got to be in his presence. When you've taken sides, you're not in his presence. When you've taken sides, then you're going to be speaking from that side. You're going to be speaking from that perspective. But when you, when you, who is on the Lord's side? When you stand with the Lord, this is how you speak. The mountains may be taken over by mystery Babylon, but all you mountains, you were made by the Lord. We prophesy to you mountains of America and we declare to you that you remember, hear the word of the Lord, all mountains of America. The Lord God, Yahweh, made you, he formed you to hearken to his voice. For if you do not hearken to his voice, I also remind you that at the blast of his nostrils and at his presence, you will melt like wax. You are no match for the God of Jacob. You are no match for El Elyon, the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth, possessor of power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. You are the Lord God, maker of the mountains. You are the Lord God who is able to cause the mountains to melt at the blast of your nostrils. We reverence you, oh Yahweh. We're not afraid of who takes over the mountains, but we look to you. And we declare, Lord, that you reign over the affairs of men in the name of Jesus Christ. And we're also told in Psalm 144 verse 5, the mountains bow to him. Say they bow, bow down your heavens, O Lord. And come down, touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. This touch is the touch of fire. Ha! We prophesy that, Lord, concerning the mountains of America and the mountains of the nations, the mountains of spirituality, the mountains of science and technology, the mountains of art, the mountains of family, the mountains of government, the mountains of commerce and academia, that, Lord God, you touch the mountains, that they smoke, oh God, cause the mountains to come up in flames. Even the flames of your presence, the flames of your fire, in the name of Jesus. Like when he descended on Mount Sinai, my God. The Bible said the angels were blowing their trumpets. The mountains quaked. Thick smoke, thick cloud descended upon the mountains. Lord, we declare that you touched the mountains of America with your mighty hands. Though the people, iniquitous people gather, they gather in the sea, they gather in graveyards, they gather in hills, they gather in caves, they gather in witch covens, they do all their sorts, manipulate and, and, and permutate and do all their stuff. Lord, touch the mountains of America with your finger, just one finger, that they smoke, oh God, consume their plots and their schemes. But let your glory be established upon the mountains of America and of the nations in the name of Jesus. So we command the Lord's blessings upon the mountains to flow to his people. Psalm 133 and verse 3 says, speaking about the blessing of the Lord, it says like the dew of Hammon, descending upon the mountains. It talks about mountains again of Zion. But look at the next phrase, next line. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. Hallelujah. Where? The mountains of Zion. So there is a commanded blessing upon mountains. In this case, Mount Zion. But I... If you look at it from a physical perspective, Zion is located just in Israel, just for Israel. But I also know that nations have redemptive qualities. So if, the, if this is a template of God, it means then that the Lord commands blessings upon the mountains. The dew, because they are the first point, the highest point of the earth, even though the lowest point also because they come from the core of the earth, but they extend to become the highest points of the earth also. So they, they reach to the heavens. So we declare, Lord, the blessings that you've commanded upon the mountains of America, that they will flow. That's what it says. Descend, 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 descend upon your people. Descend upon righteous men. Descend upon patriotic leaders. Descend upon people who truly love the nation, people who truly want to serve the nation in righteousness, in, in truth, in justice, in mercy. Lord, those who will truly use the office to, to, to help the people, those who will truly use the office to advance the people, those who will truly use the office to glorify you, not those who will censor, not those who will cancel, not those who will lead us to wars, for where do wars come from amongst you? They come from greed and covetousness. We bind the spirit of warfare. 
blood-sucking demon that causes wars amongst people. We, to, we want those, Lord, who will cause wars to cease, those who will bring peace upon the land, those who will cause shalom to flow. Oh, mountains of the Lord, favor them in the name of Jesus. Mountains of America, favor those, and, and not just presidential, but all of the elections, all of the positions. Oftentimes we are focused on the presidency, but there are more things happening than just the presidency. We declare that the mountains of society, the mountains of America, the blessings that the Lord has commanded upon you will, will come forth like you, will flow down and will favor those who will ascend the mountains and use the blessings and use the power of the office for the glory of God and to advance the people and bring joy upon the people and upon the land in the name of Jesus. Those who will deploy common sense policies, let them go forth, oh God, let the mountains Favor them in the name of Jesus. Scripture also shows us that we prophesy to the mountains according to the word of the Lord. Ezekiel 36, verse 6 to 7. This is the Lord speaking to Ezekiel. Therefore prophesy concerning the land of Israel and say to the mountains. See that? You're prophesying to the nation, but say to the mountains. That's a powerful strategy. Divine technology. You're prophesying to the nation, but you're speaking to the mountains. Say to the mountains, the hills, the rivers, the valleys. Thus says the Lord God, behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and my fury because you have borne the shame of the nations. Nations here yeah, also can refer to ethos or ethnos. People groups, right? Just groups of people. Just groups of people. Think about that. So I've spoken in my jealousy and my fury because you have borne the shame. So certain people groups can hijack mountains and bring shame upon it and the lord here says i am jealous for my nation israel but it also can apply right it says therefore thus says the lord god i have raised my hand in an oath hallelujah that surely the people groups that are around you that are in possession that's what he's saying shall bear their own shame People groups who brought shame. So we prophesy to the mountains of America, according to the word of the Lord, that those who will bring shame upon the mountains will not be able to ascend to the mountains. That those who bring shame upon the mountains will bear their own shame in the name of Jesus. That they will bear their own shame in the name of Jesus. That they will bear their own shame according to the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. You can pray more on this. I'm just throwing this out. We're going to keep praying. It's not only now that we pray. Is just to give guidance. Ezekiel 36 verse 8, But you, O mountains of Israel, you shall shoot forth your branches, hallelujah, and yield your fruit to my people Israel, for they are about to come. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We prophesy to the mountains of America that you shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to God's people. Yield your fruit to patriotic people. Yield your fruit to qualified leaders. Yield your fruit to people who will use the fruits to be a blessing to both the land, to the mountains, and bring glory to Yahweh, the maker of the mountains. We prophesy that in the name of Jesus. Make room for them as they come forth in the name of Jesus. Make room for them as they come forth. Shut the door against those who bring shame upon the mountains. Shut the door against those who bring shame upon the mountains. Oh, use the mountains for nefarious activities. Ezekiel 36 verse 12. Yes, I will cause men to walk on you. Yes, oh Father, cause men to walk upon the mountains of America. Cause righteous men, patriotic men, genuine leaders. Leaders who have the people at heart. Leaders who understand governance. Leaders who understand the human condition. Leaders who are compassionate and yet passionate. Leaders who have compassion on the people. Leaders who will lead aright. Leaders who will exalt principles of righteousness. Leaders who will not become a, an obstacle to development. An obstacle to, to elevation of the people. Leaders who will, who will put forth agenda and policies that will make everyone glad, at least most people glad. Prophesy, Lord, that they will walk upon you, O mountains of America. Walk upon you, O mountains of the nation, and you shall become their inheritance. Yes, you shall become their inheritance. We prophesied, you shall become their inheritance. But look at the next line. 
you shall no longer bereave them of children. So mountains, if you read the earlier verse, actually verse 11, mountains can actually be used to cause death. And you can see it's already happening in our time. But we declare no more shall you bereave righteous people, innocent people of children in the name of Jesus. No more shall you be used to cause death upon the land. We prophesied over the mountains of America in the name of Jesus. And then in verse 15, he said, nor will I let you hear the taunt of the nations anymore. This is so critical. The taunt of nations, nations flexing their muscles, nations pointing their fingers at you, nations, you know, just, just doing stuff, threatening and so on and so forth. We prophesy to the mountains of America that nations that taunt you will no longer taunt you in the name of Jesus. That these nations that come to point their fingers, nations that come to flex muscles, nations that come to rip you off. Oh my God. They come to rip you off. They make one-sided deals that they will no longer taunt you, oh America. No longer taunt your nations by the power of the living God. Nor shall you bear the reproach of the peoples anymore. The reproach of the peoples that you've borne. May the Lord shake it off the mountains of America. Nor shall you bear the reproach anymore. Nor shall you cause your nation to stumble anymore. America, you do not stumble. You stand straight. You stand flat-footed. You stand tall. You stand tall. You stand erect. You stand as a nation called to be a beacon of light to the nations of the earth. You stand to be a nation of strength. You stand to be a nation that is inspired. I don't say pride. A nation that is inspired. You stand to be the nation under God that you indeed are. We declare and prophesy that over you, America, that you no longer bear the reproach of the nations, the reproach of the peoples, nor do you stumble anymore. The spirit of stupor is taken away from you by the power of the spirit. We prophesy that stupor is taken away. The drunkenness of people in leadership is taken away from you. That you no longer stumble. You no longer reel back and forth like a drunken man. But you stand straight. You become a leader amongst the nations of the earth. You lead the nation aright. You lead the nation in justice. You lead the nations in righteousness. You lead the nations in mercy. You lead the nations in truth. Stop the mouth, oh God, of those who have given to falsehood and lies and deception and hypocrisy. Let their mouths be stopped that they go no further. Let the truth begin to swallow up the lies in the name of Jesus. Read us, oh God, of deceptive people in the name of Jesus that you no longer stumble America in the name of Jesus. But here is the ultimate goal of God over the mountains. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. His ultimate desire for the mountains of the earth. And don't forget, again, the earth is the Lord. He's going to, you know, uh, preach a sense of God. I know you talk about going to heaven, but don't forget you're coming back down to the earth because we're going to rule in the earth. The thousand year reign of Christ and even beyond that. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2, nine shall come to pass in the latter days. See that? That's the ultimate goal. That's where, that's where it's going. That's where it's going to end. In the latter days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains. Which mountains? The mountains of the earth. The mountains of spirituality. The mountains of science and technology. The mountains of art. The mountains of family, the mountains of government, the mountains of commerce, the mountains of academia. There is this other mountain called the mountain of the Lord's house. That's not church. That's indeed the Lord's house, the presence of the Lord, the manifest presence of the Lord, the ways of the Lord. And we prophesy that, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established even in the end, at the ultimate end. Over the mountains of the earth, over the mountains of America, over the mountains of China, over the mountains of Russia, over the mountains of Africa, over the mountains of South America, Europe, Australia, all the nations of the earth, North America, in the name of Jesus, at the mountain of the Lord's house, his righteousness. That's why Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We declare the kingdom of God will be established over the mountains of the earth and the mountains of the nations 
and all nations will flow into it and will learn of the ways of God. No more will they make war or produce weapons of mass destruction. No more will they use lies and deceptive ways to get to government. No more will they employ any tool of mystery Babylon because, of course, mystery Babylon would have been judged. Satan would have been bound and cast into the lake of fire, Revelation 20, verse 10. The false prophet, the lies, deception, all of that gone, bound and cast into the lake of fire. The Antichrist system, your administration bound and gone. And there will be one government, the government of Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we prophesy that over the mountains in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I was going to read a prophetic word the Lord gave, but I don't have the time for that. I'm just going to skip that. Maybe next time we'll look into that. I want to thank you for your time and for joining us in this prayers today. Until we come your way again shortly, stay elevated. We love you. God bless you. Bye-bye now.